uh, settings okay. in your search, and it should bring up oh, this okay. screen. And it looks like this disto that I have here, the one in my hand, is the one with the serial number ending in 3689. Oh, I see. Okay, so I've already paired it, but this is the screen you would come to. All you're going to have to do from here is select the device you want to pair, and select pair, and it'll connect to it. Oh, cool. And when, uh, this is going to be an initial setting, so you only have to do this once. And once this right. is complete, you won't have to do this again. Um, so any questions about the initial pairing? No, nope, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, once you've done the initial pairing, then you want to come in to measure square. Uh, when you open it up, it'll open up with a blank diagram. Uh, if you go over to the Project Info tab, uh, here you can write in the customer's information or the job name, for example, uh, oh, cool. or any information that you need to just so you know what, what this diagram belongs to. Right. Um, so in this case, I will go ahead and call this uh, And this is now where we can begin drawing. Uh, so if you're going to be using the Disto, again, you want to power on the Disto. And you want to pair yeah. it in your Bluetooth settings. Uh, once it's successfully paired there, you'll select on the Disto icon here on the upper left okay. side. Uh, then the Disto uh, menu will pop up on the side. Uh, then you'll find the Disto, but again, by the serial number. Uh, in this case, it's the 3689 for mine. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you want to find the serial number for your disto, uh, you're, when you remove the batteries, the serial number, will, there will be a sticker under the batteries. And that's, uh, if you look at the four digits, that's how you identify your device. But if there's nobody else with a disto around, you won't have to do that. Right. All right. That's pretty cool. So then I'll just go ahead and select connect. And then once I have a green uh, line, that means that my disto is successfully connected. Uh, now, okay. at the bottom of the, uh, towards the bottom of that screen, do you see the soft menu key with the arrows uh, going up, down, left, and right? Yes. Uh, so that's going to be where you're going to, uh, when you're holding your, uh, in your case, your Surface Pro, you'll tap and you say, hey, the next line that I'm going to measure is going to go up. Uh, now, with mm -hmm. the disto, whatever measurement I capture, uh, for example, uh, this one, this measurement here, I'll say I want this wall to go up, and then I'll capture a measurement with my disto, and yeah. it'll adjust the last wall that I've drawn. So now, do you see the, do you see the red arrow? Yeah, that's pointing to the next direction, that's right? That's pointing to the next direction, so again, I'll just, uh, you can either go along, so by default, the system will go in a clockwise rotation, uh, so yeah. if you want to just go along, you can. For example, now I'll capture the width of the office I'm in, and then now that's this direction here, right? Jesus, dude, they didn't give you a big office, did they? No, it's not really big. <laughs> um, in this case, if it's a square or rectangular room, uh, you can just hit closed uh, in the soft menu towards the bottom. Right. And, and it'll, it'll, draw it the, it'll draw the other two lines for you, yeah. Oh, cool. So that's more or less a shortcut for square or rectangular rooms. Right. Uh, Again, I'm going to go back into drawing mode. So this little red dot is basically our starting point. Uh, yeah. You want to just uh, tap the uh, disto icon, uh, the red icon on your disto, and that's going to give you your arrow. Uh, now you can uh, switch your arrow. Uh, if you want to switch it to either a 45 or 90 degree angle, you can select rotate uh, to go to the angles in between. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. The, my hardest part would be drawing a room that has you know, like on the back wall, you know how sometimes they have that little cutout that juts out a couple of feet? Uh-huh. You know, or like angles especially on some houses. Okay. Uh, so one thing that I can suggest for angles is you can let the system calculate the angle for you if there is one angle in the room. Uh, so right. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out a room with the disto. And then uh, I'll show you what I mean by doing the very last wall. So first, I'm okay. going to capture one wall. Give me one moment. And then I will capture the next wall again. This one here. Oops. And then I'm going to capture this very last wall here. Okay, now, do you, now you see it at the end of my 17-8 wall. Uh, yeah. that's, that's my that's where I'm at right now. 
Uh, basically, if that's an if that wall between here and the seven eight wall is an angled wall, and I don't know the angle, again, if I leave it to the very last wall, I don't have to measure it. Yeah. I could just select closed, and the system will calculate the uh, that angle for me, and also close out oh, the tape. Okay. So that would be the best way to calc. Uh, that would be the way to do an unknown angled wall. Right. Now that red dot, does that always start off in the center? Yeah, it always starts off in the center, but you could always move it. So if you just either, uh, it's always going to be in the center, but you can move it to wherever you like, and you could use any of those arrows uh, to move it or adjust it around. Well, I can attach, like, I can put these rooms together, like two bedrooms in the back with a hallway and a big living room. Yeah, you could, you could put it together okay. after you're done uh, drawing it. Okay, then the only question I would really have is I would play with it a little bit. Uh huh. But let's see the square. Can you see my my arrow? Let's say that back wall or the side wall in the first one you did. Mm -hmm. Let's say in the middle of that wall. Uh huh. Or let's say three feet on each side. Of, actually, they're more like five feet. Usually they come out like five feet. Uh huh. Five feet, and then it, you know, how it kind of angles in, then it squares off again, then it angles in like a, almost like a rectangular box, mm -hmm. but half a. Um, that Bluetooth thing, I, I should be able to. Let's say when I get to the, let's say five feet from the one length wall, right, and it starts to jot in. I should be able to. Um, so you're saying something that jots out, for example, like this? Yeah, kind of like that, and then it, it, it'll like. Start crossing over, yes, something like that, and then it, right, yes, that's the kind of design I'm worried about. Yeah, you you could do that with the disto also. So like I said, the system is going to try to go clockwise, uh, but right. when you get to the corner of that six one and three foot nine wall, uh, you'll just switch yeah. your arrow to keep on going in the same direction that the ten foot one wall was going. Okay, Makes and sense. how do you do a doorway? Uh, a doorway you have, uh, so for example, once you've closed the room. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be this door icon here. Okay. And you just drag it into wherever that door is going to open or swing. No, that's pretty easy. Um, now, as far as the rooms go, uh, when you're drawing the rooms, you can always draw them separate and then align them after you go. So, for right. example, here. Yeah, see, that's my, the hardest part I have is that. You know, I'll start off in the top right corner. By the time I get to the rest of the house, I'm, I'm off the page because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, yeah, so you can always, uh, after, uh, in your case, then I would suggest just dragging them each time after you're done drawing it. So right. after you're done with one room, then just drag it over and then line it up. No, that's perfect. And I heard uh, also you can calculate square yardage and square footage. It'll do it automatically. Correct. So based on the way, uh, based on the unit that you associate your product, uh, it will uh, calculate it for you in that way. Uh, one other quick thing I wanted to point out with the doorway. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. I, I applied it to just room three when I applied it. Right. First, and then when I aligned it with room one, uh, that door application uh translated to both walls so the system knows that oh, uh, that door is at both of those walls and it'll calculate the product oh, wow. halfway into the doorway for both of those and that's pretty cool so when you're measuring uh, you want to measure truly from wall to wall uh, some right. estimators like to measure from the interior uh, door to the wall right uh, you can still do that if you want but then you're going to just have a little bit of overage uh, the system right. will give you just a three inch if your walls are basically six inches uh, you yeah. can, you'll get three inches on both sides. And then let's say you wanted a closet. Mm -hmm. um, let's say it's an extension to mm -hmm. that to the 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 one to the furthest to the right. When you measure, would you would you go wall to wall and then um, where how do you draw your closet in there while measuring it? Uh, well, it'll be two. Uh, it's for example, It'll be another doorway, basically, is what it'll be, I would imagine. Yeah, so, for example, if the closet, uh, if this closet goes oh, here, for example, yeah, uh, you can then just align it here. So you basically would draw it as two separate rooms. Okay. And then just apply your door here, for example. Right. Uh, that would be one option. Now, if the door is within the room, uh, you're going to have to draw the room something like this, for example. Uh, well, we go down somewhere around here, we drag right. in. So the, yeah. the initial bedroom will look something like this, and then you can then just draw the closet, for example, from here to here, over to here, 
Uh, and those pink lines, the system is going to close the shape for me. So I'll just go yeah. ahead and click here, and then it closes that shape for oh, wow. me. So if the closet's within the room, you would have to draw the, in this case, room five, uh, as an L-shaped room. Right. Or if it's outside, it's just going to be another room to it. Um, exactly. Uh, now, one thing, uh, by taking this route and forcing a door there, uh, the system is also going to force a seam here. Uh, for example, if I place a door sure. here, uh, the system is going to force a seam here. Now, some installers uh, would probably prefer to run this piece straight through. Right. Uh, so if that's the case, you're going to have to just draw it as one room. So, for example, if we want room one, for the, if we want the carpet just to flow into the closet, uh, we mm -hmm. would have to actually draw the room uh, something like this, where we went from here to here, here, all the way out to here, back, back, and then something like this, for example. Right. Oops. Oh, I see. And that would calculate all your... It would just calculate the carpet going straight into the room. I mean, right. straight into the closet. Um, so that's more or less it. Was as far as the drawing goes, the only thing I could really suggest for you is, like you said, just to give it out, get, go out and play with it. Uh, what I would yeah. suggest doing is measure your house or, or measure your right. friend's house anywhere that you're not under pressure, uh, and that's right. why you're in practice mode. And you might want to do it four or five times. Uh, the first yeah. time you're going to probably have some issues, you know, have some headaches. Uh, but towards right. the fourth or fifth time after you've noticed where you've made mistakes you'll be a lot faster and that way when you get to a customer's house you'll be a little bit more confident so I wouldn't right. suggest going out and measuring anybody's place that you're going to be under pressure uh, of that customer <laughs> exactly. for the moment. Uh, definitely practice before uh, with the disto before you go out and your house yeah. will probably be the best place to start <laughs> exactly no I understand all right um, it's so, actually pretty cool so as far as drawing that's one of the portions we also have then dividers uh, elevations uh, a divider would be, for example, uh, let's say in this large room here, uh, at this main entry, a, uh, we have a different kind of product. So you see yeah. how the, I basically divided this region here. So now when I apply product, even though I've drawn this as one room, I'll be able to apply one product into this upper region and one product into this lower region. That's pretty neat. So you do carpet in one and tile in the other. Right. And along this line, we can apply a linear product if you want to apply, for example, a transition. Yeah, and we do quarter round and base, too, so that's kind of neat to have those, yeah. those measurements. Right. And then we also have an elevation. Uh, elevation is also, uh, this will allow you to deduct product. Uh, this is going to be, for example, if you have an island, uh, a tub, right. a sink, anything of that nature where you want to deduct product. Uh, so, for example, we'll just put one over here, and we'll say that we want an elevation. Uh, somewhere from here to here, uh, over to here, down to here, uh, something of this nature, for example. So when I apply a product, uh, this region here is not going to get a product. Wow. Um, That's so, pretty cool because we do. Yeah, a lot of flooring, you got to take the cabinets out. So uh, when you you're measuring... You can't measure them into the flooring. Uh, and when you are measuring your uh, cabinets, you can also use the Disto, uh, very similar to when you're drawing to measure the cabinets. Yeah, that's going to be cool too. Yeah.